Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. Today's session is all about the newly released Transport Canada drone regulations. We'll walk you through on what's new, how it affects your operations, and what actions you can take starting now. Here's a quick look at what we'll cover today. Uh, beginning with how these regulations came to be through regulations development, and walk you through on the upcoming webinar series uh, during this transitional period so that you can plan ahead. Then we'll break down the key regulation updates and finally wrap up with the live discussion about what all of this means for you, your team, and the wider drone community. I would like to thank everyone from Drone Vector. Uh, they're the team who spent considerable effort in interpreting the new regulations and uh, preparing today's presentation material. Drone Vector is a non for profit organization dedicated to helping drone pilots succeed through community, education, and innovation. It's about building a strong professional drone community together. We've uh, created a flight facility where you can practice, connect with other professionals, and push the boundaries. Drone Vector is also working behind the scenes on advocacy to make sure your voice matters. We'll be sharing more information about Drone Vector and the programs after the official release this May. Moving on to today's agenda. Let's take a moment uh, to look at the regulations development and how we arrived at this point. In spring of 2020 is the initial uh, release of notice of proposed amendment. Then following spring of 2021 is the fee proposal. In fall of 2021 is the consultation paper on medical requirements, especially for the proposed uh, BB loss operations. In spring of 2023 was the publication of Canada Gazette Part 1. We had a uh, interpretation of the Canada Gazette Part 1 and a call to action to gather professional feedback from the industry. We shared uh, a link of that YouTube video with everyone before uh, today's webinar to recap the Canada Gazette 1 publication. And following that is the May 26th announcement and publication of Canada Gazette Part 2. That includes the April 1, 2025 date, which allows uh, some regulations to be in effect for pilots to begin the level one complex process. And also includes the November 4th date. These are the two important dates for everyone here who are looking to pursue the BV loss, uh, EV loss, or sheltered operations. Because from April 1 is when we can start the preparation process to get level one complex um, and gearing up for the BV loss, EV loss, and sheltered operations to begin in no on November 4th of this year. Just to recap on the timeline, it reflects years of feedback, consultation, and a lot of effort from different industry sectors. Even with the new regulations now released, it doesn't really mean we have all the answers. Um, that's the exciting part of being in the drone industry because there's always innovation in technologies, evolving industry applications, and the regulations adapting to, to support that growth. This is why um, to transition through this period before November 4th, we have released a series of webinars with focus on different topics. April is our webinar today. To recap on the overview of regulatory updates, the key changes, and what it means for drone operators. May is the specific getting your level one complex certificate. Well, Go over the step-by-step -step guide on training, exams, and the uh, flight review requirements. In June is getting your RPAS operator certificate, the RPOC. Uh, we'll go over what is the RPOC, who needs it, and how to apply. In July, we'll look at the, the Canadian drone schools landscape with best practices, where to get training, what to consider. And in August, we'll go over business case on how much does it cost if you're looking to build your BV loss drone operations. September is the industry analysis on who's using it, what are the industries using BV loss or benefiting from BV loss applications. October is all about drone equipment um, on the drone models list, was qualified. Was how to select or what is the right drone for you, depending on your operations. 
November, with the uh, deregulations come into force, we'll look at the uh, recapping embarking on your BV loss operations. Next, let's get into the regulation details. We'll look at a um, uh, few topics here. First is we'll look at timing, then lower risk BV loss operations, and the new privileges added to advanced operations, the update for micro drones at advertised events, and obviously recap on the fees increase as well. So April 1, 2025 is when we can start getting certificates, uh, preparing for the new regulations, and then November 4th is when we can begin operations. I just want to quickly turn the table to do a work back schedule. So from an operator perspective, if we want to begin operations as of November 4th, when the new regulations come into force, that means before that, we need to acquire our RPOC certificate. So in October, this is when you should plan to submit and receive your RPOC certificate, uh, which by Transport Canada's um, um, timeline is 10 business days. And that takes us to September. Before that, as the pilot, at this point, you should acquire your level one complex certificate. That includes getting your ground school training, passing the additional uh, level one complex written exam, as well as passing the additional flight review. Uh, and then from there, working with your organization, if you're working with a company, or if you are simply um, you know, one person operations, that's also writing up your RPOC application. And we'll talk about the content in RPOC um, just in a moment as well. So moving to lower risk BV loss operations. First, let's talk about the location specific to lower risk BV loss. We need to operate in uncontrolled airspace, five nautical miles away from aerodromes, under 400 feet or 122 meters. For small and medium RPAS, operations in unpopulated areas more than one kilometer away from populated areas. And for small RPAS or small drones, we can also operate in sparsely populated areas. The definition from uh, um, Transport Canada on populated area is more than five people per square kilometer. And sparsely populated is more than five, but less than 25 people per square kilometer. Next, let's talk about how to conduct the BV loss operations. From operator perspective, um, operator needs to be at least 18 years or older, needs to complete minimum 20 hours of ground school, pass the online level one complex operations written exam, and pass the flight review, apply and also receive a RPAS operator certificate, that's the RPOC certificate. The first few things are pretty self-explanatory uh, regarding the age requirement, getting your training, passing the online exam, and then the new flight review. But the RPOC certificate is more than just um, you know writing a piece of uh, a paper, so to speak. It's very similar to if you're familiar with the previous SFOC application. Um, the content that's required in the RPOC application is very similar to the. SFOC application. Besides just your general information as an operator, your name, who you are, you know, address, phone number, certificates and training documents, etc. Um, there are more requirements regarding your management procedures. For example, uh, if this is a business, what are some of your business management procedures? And if you're an individual, uh, it doesn't mean that you know you have to write up a whole business user manual, but it's important to consider Training, not just the official training it takes to get your level one complex certificate, but also continuous training. And if this is a multi-team, multi-person team, then um, other people in the team, how do you train your visual observer if you choose to use them? Uh, how do you train your equipment maintenance and management team if um, you have a designated team, you know, updating firmware, checking the equipment, etc. And also training inter-team, right? How to make sure everyone uh, can coordinate and work well together. There's also system management, maintenance, and operations information that needs to be included in there. 
uh, also R pass operations menu. So that's an official menu you need to have as your R, not just your RPOC application, but also when you operate lower risk BV loss, that should be operations menu and you need to follow through the steps as you indicate in the menu. In general, the way to look at it is similar to the traditional SFOC application process is you need to define uh, who's involved in your who's involved in your operation, not just the pilot, but also it can be a visual observer, uh, as we mentioned, can be an equipment maintenance team. You may have uh, coordinators or, or people uh, specific, you know, checking airspace activities, following flight planning, etc. Those are all the important people to address in your RPAS operations menu. And what is related to the drone equipment as well as any other support equipment you choose to use. Can be ground support equipment, right? Can be additional devices that you use for uh, detecting avoidance, for scanning and uh, detecting, you know, any objects in the airspace, as well as setting up your ground risk buffer zone, uh, checking to make sure no general public gets within the minimum safety buffer zone. Those are all the important uh, equipment to address. And the last one is, how do you plan to conduct your operations? Um, very different, you know, if you plan to conduct operations in unpopulated area using a small RPAS, um, for example, during nighttime with drone equipment that meets the safety declaration with additional in air detect and avoidance equipment and procedures. That's very different risk level than someone who wants to operate in, for example, um, uh, controlled airspace with a medium R pass, or you know, it can involve other complex level of BV loss operations, which can take you away from um, simply level one complex operations, which may mean that you have to submit a more complex SFOC application. So again, defining the risk level, how it really comes down to defining the risk level of your operations, the location, you know, the equipment, the people involved, um, and your RP RPOC application can go from four or five pages to 30, 40 pages, all depends on the complexity of your operations. We also have um, additional privileges that are being added to advanced operations. That includes sheltered operations, extended visual line of sight, EV loss operations, and medium drones within VLOS visual line of sight operations. The first one is sheltered operations. The details include more than 30 meters from people, and we're talking about general public who are not involved in your operations. Lower than 30 meters above the structure and less than 61 meters horizontally from the structure. So to a degree, the sheltered operations is in a form limited um, BV loss beyond visual line of sight operations, because if you look at it, uh, if you're operating, let's say, a drone that's within 60 meters of a building structure, say if you're inspecting the building facade, and then you rotate the drone to behind the building, then you will momentarily lose visual line of sight. Um, so that's what sheltered operations support is you don't have to go through the BV loss process. You can still operate under advanced operations um, along with meeting these requirements. Next one is extended visual line of sight, EV loss operations. It must be in uncontrolled airspace, more than 30 meters from people. Again, that's general public using a visual observer with advanced pilot certificate. And the operation is within 3.6 kilometers or two nautical miles away from the pilot, visual observer, and your command and control station. So EV loss, again, is another form of li limited beyond visual line of sight. If as a pilot, at that point, you can no longer see the drone that's 3.6 kilometers away from you. So both sheltered operations and EV loss um, are added priv privileges to advanced operations without having to go through the BV loss process. The last privilege is medium drones within visual line of sight operations. 
Uh, this allows anyone with an advanced operations certificate to operate medium drones, which are between 25 kilograms and 150 kilograms. They need to be qualified drones, meaning that the manufacturers have submitted and uh, received the confirmation for safety assurance declaration. And the near people um, safety buffer zone is slightly higher or longer than the advanced uh, small drones. They're 30 meters or 152.4 meters versus if we look at small RPAS, we're working with the 5 meters and 30 meters distance can be in both controlled and uncontrolled airspace, but that depends on the drone. Just like the current safety uh, assurance declaration for small drones, it really depends on the manufacturer's declaration. The next update is on micro drones at advertised event. Um, simply recap is SFOC required. So before we don't need SFOC or um, an operator who wishes to fly a sub-250 drone, which is a micro drone at advertised event, they did not need an SFOC. Um, however, now they would need an SFOC. And there are also many sections in the release rules um, with new fees. Without getting too much into details, I'm just going to quickly recap a few different perspectives regarding the new fees. So first, from a pilot perspective, um, there are updated exam fees all the way from basic, advanced to level one complex. And there are also additional certificate fees to receive the level one complex certificate. From an operator perspective, you know, can be a business, can be an organization. So there's updated fees for drone registration. Uh, there's also new fees for applying and receiving your RPOC certificate. Um, should you choose to pursue to SFOC application either for uh, advertised events or if you need more complex BV loss operations um, for the SFOC application, now this is fee-based, which uh, before <laughs> SFOC was actually a free uh, service, there was no fees imposed on the SFOC. So going forward, uh, for advertised events or for any drone-related SFOC applications, the fees are based on complexity level. For drone manufacturers, there is a fee for going through the pre-validated declarations for the drone equipment. And then there are also different categories of fee updates for uh, essentially for fines, right, for any violations uh, of the regulations or unsafe operations. What we're going to do related to the fees section is when we run the topic specific webinars, for example, getting your level one complex or getting your RPOC or building your drone business, we're going to take into consideration of the updated fees and then use them in more of a budgeting and business analysis format.